tutorial how to use form data um, basically grabbing uh, data from a form feed without using fancy loop and stuff like this so let's get started quickly um, <clears throat> so first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna um, create a div class here um, and make that one a wrapper let's give it a class name uh, wrapper Inside that uh, div class, I'm going to create um, a form and I'm going to give it a class name uh, form. It should be fine. Close that form. Um, and inside the form, we're going to have um, a few things going on here. So, first thing, um, let's create a, a label wrapper. Um, close the label wrapper. And then inside the label, let's give it actually, we're gonna to need to reference that. So give it an ID. And the first um, field we're gonna put in gonna be um, the name field, ID. And inside that, I'm gonna add an input field with the type of text. And uh, Give it um, a name which is going to reference the ID name field, and uh, we can have a placeholder um, equal to a name, and we can uh, make it required, which is um, an HTML5 attribute. Okay, so now we got that. Let me expand it a little bit so you can see it. Um, we can just basically uh, copy this label field and we're gonna add a few more of them <clears throat> let me make some space here uh, let's add um, an email field so change name field to email the type is gonna be changed from text to email <clears throat> and we're gonna do the same thing for the name reference that um, oops require Re, re, it's to no learn to spell required required okay that should be not good uh place um, um placeholder should say um, email and then let's do um two more one for the password field so create that one uh, from email field to password and from type email to password and then make sure the name is the same and password goes into the placeholder um, let's actually make another one uh, we don't have to but for good measure and that would be the uh, password uh, verified field so it's a second field verify and do same same thing with the name um, type password perfect and the last field is going to be uh, an input field again but this time uh, we're going to give it a type equal to uh, submit so that's going to be like a little button and we're going to pass in the value as submit and the name I'm gonna give it to the bottom is uh, submit and I'm gonna close that and you should have a very basic form in front of you here okay perfect the next step uh, let's add the very basic styling for this form so we can see it a little better um, so I'm gonna go to the uh, wrapper and I'm gonna create um, a width of um, let's say uh, 400 pixels and then I'm gonna create um, let's make sure it's max width is 90% um, just for good measure and uh, make sure it's center nicely so you add margin top and bottom zero and left and right should be set to auto and that should hopefully center the little field which it did perfect 
Um, <clears throat> next thing, I'm going to um, target the uh, label, and I'm just going to do uh, a display block so that should occupy the entire space. And let's set the uh, margin, 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 um, top and bottom to 0 0.5 EM, and the left and right to uh, zero. That sort of like put nicely in the center. Um, the next thing I'm going to target would be the input field. So I'm just gonna drill down to the input in my CSS selector and uh, let's make the uh, font size here a little bigger so maybe uh, I don't know, 18 pixels should be fine Oops. and then um, how about we give it a little padding so maybe 0 0.5 m so it's a little bigger we can see it nicer uh, nicer and then uh, the last thing I'm gonna do is target the um, input uh, submit button here so we can do something like um, mm. uh, wrapper, uh, the wrapper div and then we're gonna put uh, input and we're gonna target the type equal to um, submit in the CSS um, so it's only going to target that particular input. Um, you can just give it a bigger font size, let's say uh, 20 pixels, and we can give it um, maybe a color blue. Color blue, so we can see it. Uh, blue, perfect. Uh, maybe like 25 pixels font size okay all right that's good enough all right for now perfect so we got the form fields <clears throat> and because we use the required attribute uh, if we trying to submit now the form field which they are empty uh, we're gonna get some built-in alert that we have to fill in the form um, and then again if you you have to complete everything. Email address should be email at something dot com or dot something. Um, and again, we have password field, so that's also required. Um, and now the second one. Um, there's no logic yet. And now, of course, you're going to try to submit um, the form. By default, going to try to submit itself and just gonna reset this so we can see it um, actually on the verified password probably should put in the placeholder um, verify password so people understand what the second field is and here it is okay great um, so the the objective now is to basically how do we take the input fields and and pass them on into whatever we need to and in uh, uh, this case we just want to show what's in the fields after we pass along so uh, <clears throat> I'm just gonna make this um, code a little nicer indented here so um, we can move on and take a look um, I'm gonna add a script tag over here so we can add some JavaScript and the first thing we want to do is um, I just want to log a few variables here so I can get a reference to the form. So we're going to use a const. Uh, let's log the wrapper first, and that's going to be equal to um, document that um, query selector. And we're going to find the class wrapper. Um, the second thing I want to log in is the uh, form itself and that's very important because I'm going to need to reference that in order to pass in into the data object which I'm going to talk about shortly 
Um, and again, uh, we can just take, uh, in this case, the wrapper, as a reference, and then the query a selector. Um, let's pass on uh, that is an array. Um, and then we're looking for the form um, class. Well, it's a class, right? Remember, the form class is right here. And the last piece I want to pass on is the um, submit um, form uh, input. So I call it like submit input or input submit, whatever. And then we're just gonna pass in the forms of reference here, and it's the zero because it's an array. Um, that uh, let's do like the same selectors we did for the CSS. Um, so it's the input, and then you pass in the <coughs> um, type equal to um, in this case submit. Okay, so now hopefully I got reference for the three things that I really care about. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I want to create um, a function in which is being triggered when somebody click on the submit. So we can just create a function and let's call this uh, get data form and it can be pretty much any name and the first thing I want to pass on into this function is uh, an event and I want to I want to stop the default behavior of a submit when you click on it as you've seen before it's just gonna take the form and try to send it somewhere uh, so you do um, event um, and you do a prevent default which should stop the default behavior when you click on a button. Um, the next thing I want to do is um, to create um, a variable and because we inside the function that variable is going to be a function scoped only to this function so um, we call, call this variable um, form um, data and what we're going to assign that to is to a new form data and this is the the <clears throat> the heart of my form data collection um, and what I'm going to do here, I'm going to pass in the entire form inside this new object. And what essentially the form data object is doing is going through my entire input fields and collect all the data from that into this. So I don't have to loop through anything. So this is a beautiful, beautiful way to collect data from forms. Um, the next thing I want to do is uh, I just want to show this so we can actually take a look what's being collected so I'm going to put an alert over here um, and what we want to do is we want to take the form data object which we created and actually get uh, the fields that we passed into so for example the field number one is the ID name field, so I'm going to put that here, um, and then I'm going to do concatenate with some space here, um, and I'm going to add another field over here, um, so another class, and this time it's going to be the email field we just picked up, uh, plus, and again, again, again have some space here um, and then we're gonna have the last field which is gonna be the password field um, so take that password field ID and add it over here and that's really all this function is gonna do it's just gonna show us um, the next step I have to do is um, I need to um, first get a reference to 
the submit input and add an event listener so I can in this case I'm just gonna add a click event on click just trigger this function here so um, what I'm gonna do first I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna make sure the DOM is ready so um, you can do that with using the uh, document that add event list uh, listener <clears throat> and you can just pass in um, it's called the DOM content loaded DOM uh, content loaded DOM content loaded hopefully I don't have any spellings there um, and then you <clears throat> pass in um, a function as a callback and make sure to pass in the false argument here for bubbling and inside this uh, document ready which is DOM content loaded event I'm gonna uh, get a reference to my input and I'm just gonna indent this nicely and over here I'm just gonna add another event listener um, and this time I'm gonna call it on click it's a click event and one of one when one what I want to pass is, is this get data form function and I'm gonna pass also like a false uh, bubbling event and hopefully now we have the event so basically when the DOM is loaded the DOM content loaded immediately after that register um, a click event on the submit input which is the um, variable mm. from up here a reference to this submit button and when you click on that um, basically trigger the get data form function which hopefully would give us those things so let's test it uh, john fake email is john at example com and then password will be abc123 abc123 and let's click submit and see what happened and uh, as you can see my name john was passed in my email john at example.com and my password abc123 very easy very useful beautiful beautiful code thank you so much